Today on Stock Charts in Focus, we're introducing another brand new ACP plugin. This one, our Relative Volume Pack. Three new indicators, three different ways to visualize volume relative to an average that you get to set. Lots of creative things that you can do with this, lots of creative customizations you can make as well. So on today's show, we're gonna walk through everything included in the plugin. We're gonna show you how to install it, show you how to add these indicators to your charts, and we're gonna talk about some interpretation, show you the way that I'm incorporating these new relative volume tools into my own approach. So lots to cover on today's show. You know what it is. It's all new, it's all here, it's Stock Charts in Focus. my friends welcome to the show stock charts in focus of course our product focus show here on the channel where we dig into the site dive into the features show you around the tools and ultimately help you get more value out of stock charts that's our mission here on stock charts in focus every friday my name is grayson rose vice president of operations here at stockcharts.com and it is so good to be with you on this week's edition thank you for joining me here as we introduce another brand new plugin for ACP. The team has been hard at work. We've been rolling out tons and tons of new things, especially in the ACP world over the last couple of months. But today we are back at it again with a new plugin, totally free for all Stock Charts members. This is our relative volume pack. Three different indicators, three new ways to visualize volume relative to an average. So these indicators are going to help you say, is this above average volume? Is this below average volume? Going to help you really identify kind of the buying and selling pressures going on behind the scenes. Take your volume analysis to the next level. You know, when we think about volume, the actual volume values are very important. But really, the thing that we actually care about is average volume. Is this above or below average? So that's really what these indicators are going to help you do. Uh, again, taking that volume analysis to the next level. So we got a lot to cover today. We're going to jump over to our ACP marketplace, show you how to find this new plugin first and foremost, but then we'll jump over to ACP. We'll actually walk through the indicators, talk about uh, the uh, sort of ideas behind them, the concepts behind them, and I'll show you how I'm using some of these indicators in my own approach as well. Give you some perspective on uh, how I'm incorporating them into my technical approach. So lots to cover on today's show. Now, a bit of brief housekeeping before we jump over there. I want to remind everyone that Cyber Monday is coming up November 29th, the Monday after Thanksgiving, the biggest day of the year here at Stock Charts, our biggest sale of the year. So if you are a Stock Charts member, that is going to be the day to renew your account or extend your membership. You are actually able to extend your membership out into the future, take advantage of that special pricing. Uh, but if you are a member, that is the day to sign up, to renew, to extend your account. If you're a free user, if you're not currently a member, now is the time to sign up for a free trial because what's gonna happen, you're gonna sign up for a free trial, get that one month of free time. That's gonna roll through Cyber Monday, so you'll actually be able to take advantage of that Cyber Monday special when it comes up. So if you've been thinking about joining Stock Charts, if you've been thinking about signing up for membership, if you're watching today's show and you say, wow, these relative volume indicators are really cool. I want to get that into my account. I want to get that into my stock charts experience. Now is the time to sign up for that free trial and you'll be able to take advantage of that Cyber Monday special when it comes up. So we got, we're going to have uh, plenty more details as we get a little bit closer to the date. I know I'm kind of teasing you here. We're still uh, a couple of weeks away, but just want to make sure that everyone is aware Cyber Monday, biggest day of the year coming up very, very soon, November 29th. Mark your calendars. So with that out of the way, a little bit of housekeeping, let's jump over to the site. We'll talk about the new relative volume plugin, the indicators that are included, jump over to ACP, show you how it all works. So here we are on our charts and tools page. I always like to remind people, this is a great directory of everything that's available on stock charts. You've got uh, descriptions for all of our different tools. You've got quick links and uh, easy ways to access everything around the site. This is a great, great page to, uh, to get to know, a great place to come and learn about the different tools and features that you have available to you. You can get to this Charts and Tools page by going up to the top left corner of any page around the site, click Charts and Tools, that'll take you right here. But down here on the Charts and Tools page, in the Member Tools section, we've got a card for ACP plugins. So 
This is how you can access all of our different ACP plugins, including that new relative volume pack. So we'll jump over there now, show you the full collection of ACP plugins. What we've just added on this page is a new entry for our relative volume pack. You can see that that's actually labeled as free as well, because this is a free plugin for all Stock Charts members. If you are a member, you can come here, you can install this plugin in one single click for free. So we're going to show you how to do that in just a minute. While we're here, though, I do want to remind everyone, this is the full collection of ACP plugins. It's continuing to grow over the last couple of months. We've rolled out a ton of new plugins here. We've rolled out the uh, the Chaken Analytics Power Gauge stock rating. We've uh, rolled out a brand new extension of the uh, the Larry Williams plugin, a big expansion of his plugin. Of course, we have plugins from Arthur Hill and Dave Landry, the Market Gauge team. We've added stuff from uh, TG Watkins, his Moxie indicator from the Simpler Trading team, and of course our Go No Go Charts plugins as well. So. You can come here and explore the full suite, but we've got a ton for you. Now, when you come here, if you're looking for the relative volume pack, all you've got to do is give this card a click. So we jump over here to our relative volume pack plugin, uh, and this is where you can come and learn more about what's included here. Uh, so you've got some descriptions for the three indicators that are included. What you get with this is our relative volume indicator, which is a standard standalone indicator in its own panel. We've also got a very unique overlay version of that called the Relative Volume Price Plot, RVOL PP. So that's the second indicator that you get. It's basically an overlay version of that standard Relative Volume Indicator. And then finally, for you intraday chartists, we have a Relative Volume Time of Day Indicator, which allows you to see uh, average volume at different points in the trading day over a customizable range. So we're going to jump into all of these in ACP. We'll talk a little bit more about the concepts behind them, talk about the interpretation. But here on this relative volume page, you can come and read up about these a little bit. We do also have documentation for these. So if you search our help docs, you'll also find more information about the calculation and the interpretation, some more info right there. So here on this page, though, I want to show you how easy it is to install these free plugins. All you've got to do, click that install now button. There you go. It's done because this is a free plugin for all stock charts members. I've now installed it in one click. So that really is how easy it is to install these plugins. Once you do that, they'll be added to ACP. So the next time that you go launch that new advanced charting platform, they will be over there for you. You can get there by uh, hitting that launch button, or if you've got other stuff that you want to do, you can close that down. And you do also have another launch button here. If you come back to this page, it makes it easy to get to ACP. So let's do that. Let's jump over to ACP now and take a look at the new relative volume indicators included in this plugin. So here we are in ACP. We've installed our new relative volume pack plugin. Now let's go find those indicators. Let's add them to our charts and talk about them a little bit. So when you install that plugin into your account, it's automatically going to be added once you launch ACP, the next time that you launch ACP. When you visit the uh, the platform, there will actually be, for the first time, there will actually be a little message in the middle of the screen confirming that that plugin was installed. In the case of the relative volume pack, just like some of our other plugins that include indicators, those indicators are going to show up on the left side of the screen. So over here in our chart settings menu on the left side of the screen, you can open that up by the uh, icon at the very top. Under the add indicator menu, the relative volume indicators will show up as their own group, just like other plugins. So you see we have the uh, all indicators menu up at the, uh, the top. You also have the ability to actually favorite indicators, which we'll talk about in a sec, but that shows up at the very, very top. Uh, but when you scroll down this list, down below the built-in indicator set, you get down to some of the plugins. Now, when you install the advanced indicator pack or other free plugin from us, uh, that will show up first. That's its own group here. Right below that, we've got our relative volume group. So those three indicators that we talked about, relative volume, the overlay, the price plot, and that intraday indicator, the time of day, those show up right here. If you enjoy these indicators, you want to make them part of your process, you want to make them a little bit easier to find, you can star them. You can see that anything that has a little yellow star will show up in that favorites list at the very top. So if you do want to make these a little bit easier to find, you can always star those indicators and they'll be actually duplicated up top in your favorites list. To add them, it's very, very easy. All you got to do is click the name. So 
Let's start with the relative volume indicator, the first one up in the list. We'll talk about this indicator and talk about how to, uh, to interpret it, how to use it a little bit. So here I've clicked the name. Now we've added the relative volume indicator to our charts. I'm actually gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so that it's easier to see. The concept behind this though is very simple. We're looking at the volume relative to an average. So instead of looking at volume in terms of its absolute values, the actual volume values every day, we're looking at those same volume bars, but relative to an average that we get to set. We can do that by customizing the period. So in this case, we're looking at a daily chart. So this is going to be over the last 50 days by default. The, uh, the default setting here for the relative volume indicator is going to be 50 periods. But we can change this to be whatever we want. If we wanted to look at average volume uh, or volume relative to the average over the last 20 days, we can drag this down to 20. It makes it easy to see that. Very easy to use these sliders, customize any of these settings. Uh, if we wanted to change this to be 200, we can also actually type in this box. So we can actually type that up to 200. Now we're looking at volume relative to the average over the last 200 days, 200 sessions. So it's very easy to customize whatever sort of average you want to look at. You also get to set the, uh, the moving average type that you want to compare to. So if you want this to be the default, which is a simple moving average, you can just leave that alone. But if you do want it to be a little bit quicker, you can change this to actually be an exponential moving average. So this is going to change things just a little bit. Uh, simples versus exponentials is a whole separate conversation. Uh, but if you uh, if you do want to change it to be calculated against an exponential moving average instead of the, uh, the simple default, you can do that as well. But so what you're doing here is setting that average and then sort of re, uh, rejiggering, if you will, uh, changing the, uh, the volume view to show you volume bars relative to that average. Now, by default, the baseline here is going to be 1.0. What that means is that the line going across is the average over the last n number of days, whatever you set. So in this case, we're looking at the 200 day average, a baseline of one. That means that this line going across, you can see that the baseline there is one. That is the average. One equals the average, if you will. We can change that though, because again, this indicator is all about viewing above average or below average volume moves. Let's say we wanted to only see the biggest uh, above average volume moves. Well, we could change this to be something like 1.5. So when we change our baseline, now it's going to move that up. You can see that the baseline moved to 1.5. What that is now showing us is everything above that line is more than 1.5 times the 200 day average, the average that we've set. And everything below that baseline is below the 200, 1.5 times the 200 day average. So you can actually get creative here by modifying the baseline, setting different things. If you wanted to see something even more aggressive, we could do something for instance, like two. So now we're viewing uh, volume moves that are more than twice their 200 day average. So the idea behind this indicator is really to help you see above and below average volume moves, kind of reframing volume, if you will, and showing you relative to an average. So a different way to visualize volume. Now, when we think about volume, what really matters with volume is the size of the volume that's been traded. So for instance, when we're thinking about a, a breakout, we want to see a breakout on big volume. We want, we want a lot of buying pressure behind that move. So it's not enough to just see, you know, oh, the volume spike looks like it's kind of big, maybe on the chart. With the relative volume indicator, you can confirm that it's actually a big volume move. So for instance, let's say we uh, we set this back down to 1.5. On this chart, actually, that we have up in front of us, we've got elastic, really kind of making a nice breakout right now. If I zoom in a little bit, we can see that a little bit better. So here we have elastic making a breakout. And on this big jump, we want to say, is this on above average volume or below average volume? Well, here what we've set is a baseline of 1.5. So we know that everything that's above that baseline is going to be quite substantial volume. And in this case, using the crosshairs, it's really easy to line those up. We can see that when we draw that down to the relative volume panel, we can see that this breakout here in elastic, this big candle was actually on volume that was more than 1.5 times the 200 day average. So that's how you can start to use this indicator. It really helps you see above or below average volume moves. 
Now, a couple of other options that you do have available to you for the relative volume indicator. We'll set our baseline back to one. Here, we can actually change the scale of this indicator. So by default, we're gonna view this as a ratio that's just gonna take the volume values, divide those by that average volume value uh, and spit out a number. You can see in the label here in the, uh, in the legend, we have that expressed as a ratio 0 0.527, 1.568, whatever that ratio is gonna be. If you wanna think about this though, in terms of percentages, uh, you can actually change this scale to be percentage. Now you can see that that percentage scale has, uh, has been uh, added to the indicator. So this is now gonna help you see, is this volume 10% uh, you know, above the average, 50% above the average, 150% above the average. It's gonna kind of reframe that, uh, that relative volume uh, number for you. So if you like to think in terms of percentages, you can change that scale. If you like to think in terms of just the ratio, you can leave it as the default. Finally, of course, you do have a bunch of style options here. So you can change the style of those bars if you want them to be uh, different bar types. If you want this to actually be expressed as a line, maybe even dots, you got a whole bunch of different options there. You can change your opacity. That's going to sort of fade it uh, in or out, make it uh, a little more transparent or make it as bright as possible if you set that up to one. And you can set all of your colors here as well. So that sort of rounds out the uh, options that you have available to you here for the relative volume indicator. Now, let's jump over and take a look at the relative volume price plots. We're actually going to leave the relative volume indicator on the charts so you can kind of see how similar these are, uh, but sort of how uh, the, uh, the overlay version can help you. So we're going to close this out. We're going to go back to our add indicators list and add that relative volume price plot. So the relative volume price plot is the exact same concept as what we've talked about here with the relative volume indicator. It's telling you if each individual day is above average volume or below average volume. For below average volume days, we put a red down arrow above the bar. For above average volume days, we put a green up arrow below the bar. Now, if we match these two indicators to be the exact same, by default, they're going to have the same settings, but we've kind of modified some things here. So I'm actually going to change this to be 200, and I'm going to leave our baseline as 1. Uh, what you can see now is that these should line up exactly. They are doing the same thing. So every time that we have a relative volume bar that is above that baseline, we're also going to have a corresponding arrow, uh, whether it is green and up and, uh, and below the bar or red and down and above the bar. So here, for instance, we can see a big, big green bar. We've got that green arrow here. We can see a red bar. We've got that uh, red down arrow as well. So these are actually doing the exact same thing. Now, the idea behind the price plot is to give you a way to see these relative volume moves directly on the chart without having to have the entire indicator down on your chart as well. So you've got a couple other settings that you can start to play around with to do that. First and foremost, by default, this is going to show you above average and below average volume moves, but you can change that actually to be either just the above average volume moves, so just the green icons, or just the below average volume moves, just the red icons. Personally, I like to think about the, uh, the above average volume moves, so I like to actually change this to be above average only. That's going to only show me arrow icons, only show me those little markers on the days that are above average volume. Now, again, as we were kind of talking about earlier, I want to think of big volume moves. When we're thinking about a breakout, for instance, in Elastic, as we were talking about earlier, I want to make sure that I'm really focused on the biggest volume moves. I want to confirm that a breakout is on big volume. So if we change this baseline, just like we did with that relative volume indicator, if we change this baseline to 1.5, this is now only going to show us the above average volume days that are more than 1.5 times that average that we've set. For both of these, we've set this as the 200 day. We'll actually jump in here and uh, just so that we can see how these are the same. I'll change the baseline on that relative volume indicator as well to be uh, 1.5. Let's go back to our price plots. So now we have two indicators on this chart that are in theory, the exact same thing. We can see that every time that we have a, a big green bar here on the relative volume, 
uh, indicator, we also have one of those green arrows uh, on this chart. So these are doing the exact same thing. When we think about our, uh, our breakout that we were talking about earlier, there's that big candle that we were looking at. We've got a green arrow because this is more than 1.5 times the average volume of the last 200 days. So we can sort of bring that relative volume concept directly into the charts. Now, what I find so cool about this is that this gives us that relative volume analysis, allows us to bring that volume analysis into our charting without having an extra indicator panel on the charts. So for instance, if we wanted to actually X out of here and delete that relative volume indicator off the chart, now we're left with just the price plot version, just the overlay version. And this allows us to see the exact same thing and customize it to fit how we want to view it, but directly on the chart. So we don't actually have to take up any space on the chart uh, with an extra indicator panel. We can leave the chart very, very clean and just have these little arrow icons. So every time that we see one of these arrow icons, we know that that is an above average volume day. We don't even really need to, uh, to have the volume charted on there. We don't even need that extra indicator panel for the, uh, the full relative volume. We can just leave these icons. If you like clean charts, but you still wanna bring some of that volume analysis into your approach, this is a great way to do it. For instance, we're looking at a seriously clean chart here, no moving averages, nothing, basically just the candlesticks and this overlay here. And we can still take that, uh, that same concept. We can still see it here applied in elastic. So again, we've got our little 1.5 times arrow. We know that this is a big volume day and we can see elastic breaking out very, very clearly because this chart is so clean. So I think this is a, a great, great uh, feature here of that price plots version of the relative volume indicator. Uh, allowing you to kind of bring that into your approach, but without having to take up any extra space on the chart. Pretty cool what we've been able to do there. Now, before we jump over to the time of day indicator, the last one in the pack, I want to talk about how to kind of bring all this together. Uh, that third indicator, remember, is for intraday charts only. So before we jump over to an intraday chart, let's take a look at sort of how to combine some of this stuff into one big chart. If you wanted to go crazy and start to build out a, uh, a really, really kind of over the top volume analysis chart, these indicators are gonna help you do that. So for instance, this is one that I've created here, what I'm calling my volume analysis chart. This brings in a whole bunch of those things that we've been talking about. Here, we have that price plots indicator, price plots version of the relative volume. We've got that set to the 200. We've got that with our 1.5 times baseline. If we actually click in there, you can see that a little more clearly. So this is showing me only the above average volume days that are more than 1.5 times the average. Makes it really, really clear to see with those little arrow icons here. I also have the full relative volume indicator as well though. In this case, I've actually left this one at one uh, so that I can just sort of see straight up uh, whether it's above average or below average. I'm letting the price plots be my kind of second tier uh, only showing me things that are, are more than 1.5 times the average. I could set this to be two. I could customize this even further. Uh, but I like to have these uh, sort of second tier of, you know, ultra big volume breakout uh, on, uh, on the chart here with these, uh, these little price plot indicators. But then I have the, uh, the standard relative volume down here with the baseline of one. On my chart here with uh, my sort of ultimate volume analysis chart, I've also brought in volume by price, positioned that over on the right side. I've faded that out quite a bit, uh, but this gives me uh, an idea of you know price levels where we've traded lots and lots of volume in a specific security. So here we can see actually when Elastic uh, made this, uh, had this kind of pullback down to, uh, to really the 200 day moving average, that actually corresponded with a, a price level, price range that we had seen big, big volume trading at in the past. So a little bit of support there, uh, bouncing off sort of prior uh, price levels, also bouncing off a moving average and a level that we had a lot of volume trading at. So you can really start to uh, to sort of see some of these uh, sort of volume details in, uh, in, in great detail um, with uh, some of these indicators here packed onto one chart. And we can see that as we exploded kind of off of that level, we were on a big volume day. And again, we've got our crosshairs on, so we can see that, uh, that arrow icon, we can bring that down. We can see that on that day, we're actually 1.88 times the average volume of the last 200 days. So this is personally how I have sort of combined all these different volume indicators onto one chart. This is kind of my high level uh, volume analysis chart for, for the daily timeframe. I've also got, by the way, at the, uh, the bottom of this, accumulation distribution 
and on balance volume on there. So anyways, gives you a sense of kind of how you can bring all this stuff together into one chart. So now that we've covered the first two indicators in, uh, in pretty great detail, the relative volume and that price plots overlay version of that relative volume indicator, let's jump over to the third indicator in this pack, which is the time of day version. For all you intraday chartists, this indicator is specifically built for intraday charts. So we'll jump over there and take a look at that now. So we've reset a little bit. Again, this third and final relative volume indicator included in the RVOL pack, the RVOL plugin, is for intraday charts only. So we've reset a little bit by getting to another blank chart here, no moving averages, nothing like that. And this is a 15 minute chart. So we've got an intraday period on the chart. Now, again, this RVOL time of day indicator is gonna make your volume analysis on those intraday time periods even stronger by sort of reframing volume against the average trading volume. So let's add this to our chart and we'll take a look at it and walk through some of the details. To do that, all we've got to do is give that RVOL TOD a click. We've added that to our charts. Now I'm going to make this bigger so we can see it a little bit better. Here we can do this, just drag that up. And what we see here is that we've got uh, some similar defaults to what we saw in the past. The, uh, the default periods is going to be 50. That's actually the most that we can do. Um, but we've got that default period. You can customize that if you want to do uh, maybe something over the last 20 days, whatever you want to set that period to. Uh, for instance, we'll set it to 30. What this is showing uh, is volume with the addition of what we call the average volume line. Now that average volume line is very special because it's not just the, uh, the average over all the different volume bars. It's actually looking at the average at that time of day over the last N period. So you get to set whatever that is. In this case, we're looking at the last 30 periods. So over the last 30 periods, it's gonna actually calculate the average volume at each time of day and print that with that average volume line. So that's why we end up with that, uh, that kind of U-shaped pattern in this average volume line. If we stop and think about it for a second, we know that trading volume at the open is much higher than uh, the middle of the day and trading volume at the close also much higher than the middle of the day. The middle of the day, generally a lot slower, a lot fewer trades taking place. So we see a lot of volume at the open, a lot of volume at the close and a lot less volume in the middle of the day. So that's gonna be reflected in that average volume line. That's why we see that kind of U-shaped pattern. What this allows us to see though, is the volume bars, the standard volume bars, printed against that relative volume line, that average volume line for each time of day. So we can really start to dig into the volume activity at different times of day in a whole new way. For instance, let's dig into this day right here. So we can see that uh, on the 9th, we had a close that was about average. We can see that that average volume line there and the volume bars kind of line up. And the next day when the, uh, when the trading opened, we had an open that was about average as well. The first two 15 minute blocks here were pretty close to the average. It took us a little while though, but on the 10th, we did see some volume start to pick up. At this time of day, a couple of 15 minute blocks into the day, we saw a lot of trading activity happening here, uh, much higher than we would typically see at this time of day. Now, in the middle of that day, we saw two 15 minute periods back to back with much higher trading volume than we normally see at those times of day. So we can see that clearly here, those volume bars, which do represent the actual volume bars for that day, those are much, much higher than that black line, which represents the average volume at that time of day. So we can really start to kind of dig into this trading activity in a whole new way. As we move forward through that day, we can see that a little bit later in the day, a little closer to the session, kind of in the afternoon, we saw again, a lot of volume going on. And we can start to pair that with what we're seeing in the, uh, in the price activity up above. We can see the elastic was really getting hammered. So this is a, a lot of selling, it seems like going on in this name. Now, as we get a little bit further into the day, at the end, we can see that that very final bar, the last tick up, we saw a close with a little bit of buying that was much higher than the average close. Uh, in this case, not quite as, uh, as far above the average as what we were seeing in the middle of the day, but we can see that the, uh, the close on this day was higher than what we normally see from Elastic. 
Now, in the, uh, the next couple of sessions, we can see similar things. So we can start to compare trading volume to the average for that time of day. I find that this is fantastic for digging into high volume opens and high volume closes, especially those crucial periods. Also very, very interesting though to see uh, high trading activity during the middle of the day. When we're seeing big, big block trades coming through on the charts. It's very, very easy to see those uh, with this relative volume time of day indicator. So again, for all you intraday chartists, this is kind of adding a new dimension, a new layer to your volume analysis. What's pretty cool about this indicator as well is that what you're seeing in the back is the actual volume indicator. So if you have volume on your charts and you want to keep volume on your charts, you don't actually have to add another indicator to your chart. You can actually just change out volume for the relative volume time of day, if you will. Uh, and what that's going to do is basically just add this average volume line to the volume indicator. So by default, this is actually going to have a pretty low opacity so that you can really see the average volume line pretty clearly. If you want to change any of those style settings, though, just like what we're looking at with some of the other indicators, you can do that. So for instance, if you wanted your volume bars to be really, really bright and you wanted to just kind of see that average volume line in the back, uh, you can change that. If you wanted it somewhere kind of in the middle, maybe you want it somewhere that's uh, at 0.8 or, uh, or 0.75, let's say, uh, you can change any of those style settings. You can also change the colors. You could make your average volume line much brighter, maybe make it an orange line or something like that. So you can start to set this and, uh, and really customize it to the view that you want to see. But what's pretty cool, again, is that uh, this really can just be kind of a replacement for the standard volume indicator on your charts because it is showing you the actual trading volume throughout the day just with the addition of that average volume line. Makes it really easy to see, again, those, uh, those above average and below average, uh, but especially those above average volume moves. So that is what you get with our new relative volume plugin. A couple of new ways, creative ways, creative visuals, uh, for uh, for seeing volume in a whole new light. Again, with this free plugin, totally free for all Stock Charts members, you get that relative volume indicator, allows you to compare volume to a specific average of your choosing, however much data you want to see. You get to customize your periods there, customize how far you want to look back. We've also got the overlay version of that relative volume indicator, the uh, the relative volume price plots. Makes it really easy to add some volume analysis into your charts without needing an entirely separate indicator panel. If you want to see whether a specific bar or specific candlestick is on above or below average volume, you can use that overlay, add it to your charts without having to add the, uh, the full volume panel there. A really nice way to bring in a little bit of volume analysis to your charts without cluttering things up too much. And finally, we have our relative volume time of day indicator for all you intraday chartists out there. A very, very interesting way to see volume printed against the average for those different times of day. Allows you to zero in on high volume opens, high volume closes, things like that. And big trading activity during the middle of the day when we typically see lower trading values, uh, lower trading volume. You can see that nice and easily with that time of day relative volume indicator. So a couple of new additions here with this relative volume pack. And again, totally free for Stock Charts members. You can install this in a single click bring these indicators into your ACP experience, a very, very easy way to, uh, to enhance your ACP charting experience and enhance your volume analysis. Hopefully you've had some fun walking through this plugin with me today. It's been a blast to uh, tour you around some of the latest additions here in ACP with our relative volume plugin. I wanna remind you that we've got Cyber Monday coming up at the end of the month as we hit on at the start of the show. So keep your eyes peeled for that. More details coming very, very soon. And of course, more good stuff coming to ACP and the rest of the site very soon. We've got more plugins coming. We've got new features coming. Lots of good stuff. So it's going to be a big next uh, couple of months here on the site, as always. I want to thank you again for joining me on today's show. It's been a blast to be with you. Remember, we do this show every Friday, Stock Charts in Focus, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Stock Charts TV. Also up on our YouTube channel after that, though, and the on-demand platform at stockchartstv.com. So lots of different ways to watch. But uh, really, every Friday, we just sit down, try to take a look at different corners of the site, things that are new, features that we've had for a long time, try to help you get more value out of Stock Charts. That is our mission here with this show every Friday. So I want to thank you for, uh, for joining me today. Hopefully, I'll see you again soon. 
My name is Grayson Rose, Vice President of Operations here at StockCharts.com. We'll be back again soon for another edition of Stock Charts in Focus. But until then, chart on, my friends. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.